Cowabunga, my nieces and nephews. Welcome back to Fun Uncle, where we're talking about all things blockchain, cryptocurrency, NFTs, and of course, the elephant in the room, that is Bitcoin's fall from grace. That's right, 50% drop from all time high, but you better believe that all the king's horses and all the king's men will put Bitcoin back together again. If that sounds good to you, then stay tuned for the rest of this episode. That's right. This is Fun Uncle, where I talk about all things cryptocurrency, blockchain related. And I got to remind you, if you weren't a part of a family before, you are now because I'm your uncle and you are my nieces and nephews. And I'm going to talk about the crypto markets uncle style, if you're all right with that. And it starts with just looking at the charts. Things are pretty doom and gloom here. They're down significantly from their all-time highs, and especially upon the uh, recent news that's been coming out. The stock market's down. Our guy Brandon is making some posturing on Capitol Hill that's scaring people out of their investments. But this is just another walk in the park for us long-term crypto enthusiasts. And I think that was highlighted beautifully in this meme I saw the other day. It's like, oh no, my portfolio is down 25%. It's down 25% so far. And this is something that made me crack up because I've been in space since 2016. You know, I saw the absolute devastation, the, the gut-wrenching devastation of the 2017 drop as I saw my portfolio just completely obliterate. And... Um, and I just want to remind everyone who's new to the space that this is a long-term play. You should be daily cost averaging. You should be buying uh, every Monday or the first of the month, whatever fits your you know strategy the best. And just keep your head up because this is a long-term play. I remember when Pokemon cards came out and it had its fall from grace and I sold all my cards. I remember Magic the Gathering came out and it had a lull. And I sold all my cards and got disinterested in the space. Uh, the same thing with the dot-com boom. It had its big peak, and then it had a massive fall from grace, and everyone started to just, you know, run for the hills. It was it was a fad. You know, no one's no one's going to keep up with this anymore. And so I'm just reminded that, this, that all these things have happened, and this is not something to scare me away. It's something to reinvigorate myself in the space, to try to keep investing, and to keep my head up. But a lot of things have changed since 2017, specifically the amount of crypto that is locked up in DeFi protocols. There's almost $100 billion locked up in staking in DeFi, and this means that if people wanted to panic sell they can't you know which is great this brings significant stability to the crypto space where people who once were trying to sell no longer can and the same thing with ethereum there's 34 billion dollars locked up in eth 2.0 and there isn't even a date yet for ethereum 2.0 so we don't even know when people will be able to pull their money out on eth 2.0 contracts so what this really is supposed to remind you is that there is a bottom for the crypto space. There, there is a point where people can no longer sell. It's not like this is going to go to zero because it's impossible. People have locked their money up into the space and people continue to lock their money up in the space, especially when we have these amazing prices. These are absolutely stellar prices for Bitcoin. You should be trying to scooby-doo scoop it up as much as you possibly can because look at this. These are stellar prices. This is an incredible dip to buy, and I'm excited to encourage you, not financial advice, to uh, you know consider buying some of it if and when you can. Another thing to keep into consideration is the fair value price for Bitcoin. We are pretty diggity riggedy darn close to it. And you better believe that the uh, institutional investors, those large countries, those corporate investors are going to be licking their chops from the head to the toe and they're going to move from the bed down to the down to the flow whenever we get to these prices. They're going to want some of this Bitcoin at $28,000 and they'll be buying it by the billions. So whenever you see Peter Sniff telling you that it's going to go to zero, he's completely wrong. He actually doesn't know how it works. There's so much money locked up. There's so many long-term investors who are buying the dip. And there are countries and there are uh, institutional investors. There are corporate investors who are putting 1% to 5% of Bitcoin on their balance sheets because it's a great hedge against inflation. And Ethereum, same thing. It's going to be about $2,200 is the what I would consider the local bottom, what they're calling the fair price for Ethereum. Look at the charts, we're pretty close to that right now. We're about $200 away from it. So those of you who are contemplating selling right now because you're like, oh, it's gonna keep falling, oh, it's gonna keep falling. Well, maybe 
it might keep falling, but the levels to which it will fall to are not going to be advantageous for you to scoop up. It really, you should be considering buying the dip with new funds instead of trying to sell to reaccumulate at lower levels because we're pretty close to it. Honestly, I would be pretty shocked if we kept following any further than this. And what's more is it's Sunday you're watching this. Monday, we're going to have the markets open back up. There's going to be a relief rally of some kind as people start scooping up the stock market. That's going to bring new faith back into other markets like crypto and uh, real estate. And so that's just overall fantastic news for the space uh, because these are dips that people want to buy. I've had plenty of my friends hitting me up on social media saying that they, you know, normally had a um, DCA for Monday, but they decided to buy some on Saturday and Sunday because the prices were too good to pass up. They, they even shifted their daily cost averaging date to the weekend because they were like, wow, these are great prices. I don't want to miss out on this. And they're so confident that Monday will be a relief rally of some kind. And another one you got to consider is the fear and greed index as at 11. And I got to remind everybody once again that when people are fearful, you should be greedy. Whenever there's blood on the streets, you got to be buying property. All right. So this is just um, another walk in the park for us long term investors. We've been in this space for a long time now, and this is something that just doesn't unfaze us. When we look at these metrics and we go, well, OK, the RSI is at a very low level. Look, it's almost touching zero. This RSI, the relative strength index, is close to zero, which is a buy signal for most of us. When the fear and greed index is you know, <laughs> almost in the single digits, that's a buy signal for a lot of us. And what's more is this chart right here says that we might be posturing for a very interesting double bottom scenario here. So if we, we remember my previous chart, where the fair value for Bitcoin was about $28,000. Well, this chart can goes one step further and says, okay, if we do hit this $28,000 level, that will signal a double bottom for the long-term space. And that will trigger us for a relief rally that might uh, invigorate people to continue buying and shoot us into all-time highs. And remind yourself, look at this chart. This is 2023. So what they're suggesting here is that this is going to be December of 2023 another dip into the new year right so the same thing we're seeing a dip in january february we might again see the same kind of pattern play out in 2022 where we reach new all-time highs sometime in the third fourth quarter of this year we're going to have another dip and then more of the same this is a long-term play and uh remind yourself about bit about pokemon for those of you who are old enough to remember Pokemon when it first came out, and we could buy packs for a couple dollars each. You get a Charizard. I had a couple Charizards, and I was like, eh, you know, it's just cardboard, you know, whatever. It's just cardboard. Throw it away. Get rid of it. I got to go to college, you know. So um, I want to just remind everybody to keep your head up. Daily cost average. This is frothy with growth. And this is not only a cultural shift, but this is a technological shift that's taking place right now. Like we are seeing a lot of massive changes in the space. So keep your head up, uh, keep your head on a swivel and do not let these dips scare you away. And with that, let's dump on into the crypto news where we have some explanations for why the dip took place. For starters, it's the Fed's inflation measures. We've got uh, new inflation numbers coming out on the 25th to 26th of this month. I think that's Tuesday or Wednesday coming up here. Expect uh, up to 1% coming in here uh, this week, which will potentially scare people away again, you know, like fear is going to um, bleed into the market. And so I'm hypothesizing that we will have a relief rally on Monday. So people will buy the dip on the stock market on Monday, whenever the markets open up, whenever they buy that dip and we start to see the stock market go into the green, that will encourage investors to buy up Bitcoin again, because they're like, okay, we're seeing a relief rally in the stock market. Then we will see a relief rally in all the other markets. Then the Fed will come out with this new inflation number on Tuesday or Wednesday that will cause another dip. OK, so just keep this in mind that we will see a relief rally on Monday and Tuesday. Then we'll see another dip on Wednesday and Thursday off of this bad news. So just remember that this isn't the sky is falling kind of thing. This is just more shape shifting lizard elites manipulating the market so they can scoop up at better prices and play the market. So you, you so you better believe that people are going to buy on Monday sell on Wednesday just to scoop back up again on Friday or the following Monday. So 
This is people just playing the market again, try to get in at these great prices and do not buy the whole farm on Monday. Have some money on the side to continue daily cost averaging as they continue to shift things around. Uh, there's a correlation with Wall Street. Of course, we saw the Wall Street dump on the back of Brandon's news that he might go to war with Russia. Russia wants to ban crypto and they're trying to invade Ukraine simultaneously. So this is just more political posturing. I'm pretty confident that what um, Russia is trying or what Putin's trying to do is he's trying to strong arm the U European Union into I don't know what. He was recently kicked out of the G8. It's now referred to the G7. And so I think that might have something to do with it where he's just like, hey, let me back into the G8 or hey, give me more oil or hey, give me better prices on X, Y or Z or I'll invade Ukraine. I'm posturing. I have a bunch of troops at the border. I'll totally do it if you don't, you know, if you don't uh, like my friend request on Facebook or, wh or whatever it is that he has, he's trying to freak out about. But you got to keep in mind that people are buying this dip. El Salvador has bought 410 more Bitcoin amid the market drop. So this is just another more news to the fact that like, do not let this dip scare you. This is an amazing dip to buy. When people are fearful, you should be greedy. And there are countries, whole countries buying Bitcoin by the millions because they see the long term potential of this space as do I. And as your uncle, I want to encourage you to see it as well. This stock to flow founder says that this dip is just more the same and it is not going to stop Bitcoin from adding another zero. Let's go back to my previous chart here where we see, yeah, that's $140,000 is the level it's going to reach. Again, it's not till the end of 2022, possibly the beginning of 2023, right? That we'll see it happen. But this is more uh, fact to the hypothesis that this is an unstoppable force that will keep mooning. It'll keep shooting up higher and higher and adding another zero is just uh, what Bitcoin has always done. You know, we, we were excited when it hit, uh, you know, a thousand dollars. It hit twelve hundred dollars. Right. And then it fell and then it hit twenty thousand dollars and then it fell. It hits almost seventy thousand dollars and then it fell. It's because it's just stair stepping its way up to these newer highs and newer highs, and it'll continue to do so for decades. This is an unstoppable force that you should believe in the technology. This is not only a cultural change, but a technological change and a financial change that we all should believe in. And I want you to pick a currency that you believe in. All right. Don't take my advice for it. Do the research. All right. Because this is not a financial advice. This is a fun uncle show. Okay. This is not sitting around with Dr. Professor expert time. Okay. This is fun uncle. Okay. <laughs> I'm talking about things uncle style over here. And it's all about the vibes. It's about keeping the faith and keeping things fun. But the truth is, is I'm just echoing the sentiments I'm seeing from the experts. The writing is on the wall. We have so much more room to grow. And the Stash CEO agrees with me. He says, this is an opportunity time. This is an opportune time for retail investors to enter the crypto market. So don't be shaking out your paper hands right now. Don't be afraid of further dips. Be daily cost averaging this dip, okay? This is, these are awesome prices. Are you kidding me? Look at it, and this is the weekly chart right now. Like, look at the levels we're hitting. There is a double bottom potential taking place here, right? So we dip, we wick to 28,000. These massive shape-shifting elite, lizard elites will be scooping up these prices. They're going to buy the dips by the billions. And it's one of those things that like, I'm not, um, I'm not guessing here. You know, I've just seen it happen so many times that they will keep buying the dips. They will keep buying the dips. It'll keep shooting to new all-time highs. And, um, and you as a retail investor just need to grip, just take a, take a, a firm grip of your surfboard and cowabunga your way with us to these new all-time highs by daily cost averaging on Mondays or the first of the month, whatever fits your budget the best. And pick a coin that you, you have the most faith in. And if I'm being honest with you, Cosmos has been doing some stuff recently that's got me pretty excited. Uh, as far as this dip is concerned, uh, whenever we look at, you know, what has fallen the worst, the hardest, you know, Cosmos has been one of those coins that has really had a grip on itself. And actually, look at the good. So, so one is doing pretty good right now. Phantom is doing all right in the space. 
Uh, you know, there's Cosmos right there. It's up 10% in the last 24 hours. So this, you know, so so I'm not going to tell you what to do or what to buy here because this is fun, uncle. This is not financial advice. Okay, it's fun, uncle. But from what I'm seeing, there are some coins that weathered this dip pretty well. So this is when you really need to keep your eyes on the market is whenever things are dropping by 20, 30%. What are the coins that stood their ground? Okay, what are the coins that did their, that, that sure they dropped because everything dropped, but there were a fair amount of coins here, you know, Phantom, One, uh, at, you know, Cosmos, Atom, that were kind of defiant in the face of all of these other coins dropping. You know, whenever we saw the big players starting to fall, there were other coins that were scooped up that people bought the dip in a big way because they believe in the technology and they see the growth potential of some of these lower cap coins. Um, and I want you to keep your eye also on Shiba. How did Shiba do? How did Dogecoin do? Did they do good? Did they do well during the dip? No, they saw some of the most significant drops of them all, 20 to 30% drops each uh, per day on those meme coins. Um, there's some other you know, words you might use to describe them, but I'm gonna call them meme coins right now. Um, but at the end of the day, they're all cash grabs because there's no technolo technology behind them. There's no great leadership behind them. Uh, it's all just cash grabs of some kind that really have no significant long-term potential within them. And that's why just keep your eyes on the ones that are doing well and try to daily cost average them when you can. Now, it wouldn't be an episode of Fun Uncle without some NFT news, and we're dumping right into it with the fact that weekly NFT sales reached $4.7 billion, increasing by 81%. That means that they saw the dip happen, and they said, let me keep buying yummy, yum, yum, tasty goodness, because this space is frothy with growth potential. If you took all NFTs, combine them together, it's only like 30, 40 billion dollars. If the NFT space was a cryptocurrency, it wouldn't be in the top 25. Elon Musk could buy all of the NFTs in existence and still have some cash to spare. That's how small and new the NFT space is. And the other fact of the matter is it's still growing. People are still buying it up and also massive corporations like the NBA Top Shot have quietly surged 72% in the last 30 days. These big corporations are in agreement that the space is young, it's got a lot of growth potential still ahead, and even my main man Tom Brady is throwing touchdown passes and increasing his autograph uh, platform by $170 million. He wants to scale operations. They saw the dip took place and they said, yeah, yeah, let's throw a touchdown pass into the end zone uh, by way of NFTs and keep growing things significantly. So this is more encouraging news to the space. NFTs are frothy with growth potential. And um, they're, th this is just the stuff that we've thought up so far. Like there's going to be an unimaginable amount of things that the NFT community creates moving forward that um, there are going to be some brilliant Gen Zs in, the, in their parents' garage, thinking up the future of how we do things. And we just have to buy the dip and have faith that the human species will find a way. You know, back when the internet came out, we didn't, we couldn't imagine Amazon. We couldn't imagine Facebook, uh, but someone did. Someone in their parents' garage thought up Google and, ha and has created a world that we wouldn't know how to live without. And the same thing with ticket sales here. You know, ticket sales take stage, I love the puns here, in 2022. This is something that pe we've been doing forever. We've been holding onto our ticket stubs, whether it's a Broadway show or a, we got to see Aerosmith or, or Elton John, you know, and, and we have ticket stubs in a photo album that we show our kids like, yeah, I got to see Def Leppard. Yeah, I was there, I saw ACDC, you know, and this will be a better way to go about it. It's verifiable on the blockchain. It cannot be lost in a flood or a fire and it cannot be faked or recreated by scammers. It's on the blockchain, it's verifiable. So if someone on Craigslist wants to sell you a ticket to an Adele concert, you know it's a real one. There, you, can, you can tell and you can verify on the blockchain that yeah, that is a real ticket. That is not a right click save JPEG. We are in the Web3 space and everything is verifiable and you would need some kind of supercomputer beyond imagination 
to hack it. It doesn't even exist yet. That's how secure the blockchain and NFT space is. And so I think this is the best path forward. I think all tickets will be on uh, made by NFTs will be on the blockchain in some way. And we've only just begun because this is, we're just talking about tickets here. You know, we're just talking about collectibles. But what if your mortgage was on an NFT of some kind? You don't have to track down your bank. You don't have to call up, you know, oh, that bank got acquired by another bank. So I have to talk to this new bank to figure out where my mortgage is or, oh, you're raising rates because it's a different, con you know, no, it's a smart contract built on an NFT that will always be the same and it will not be changed by any other entity. How great would it be if your car loan was an NFT. So your warranty is folded into that NFT. So you don't have these loose pieces of paper sitting in your trunk that again, lost by flood, lost by fire, lost in a car wreck or something like that. You have it verified on the blockchain. You can check it from your phone. You can check it from your laptop. It's all there in one place for you. It is the best path forward. And I'm excited to see what comes next specifically with films i'm i'm as a filmmaker as a video guy i love this because what this allows us to do as end users it allows us to invest in films we believe in whether it's a new director or a new studio or an actor we love we can invest in them give them money up front to make a better film and then from the filmmaker perspective, you know while making the film that you already have a fan base. So whenever you make the film and release it in theaters, you know you have at least that many people excited to see it in theaters. And then those individuals will bring their network of friends and families to also see the movie they invested in. More ticket sales means your NFTs will grow in price. And so this is a beautiful synergistic ecosystem around the filmmaking community that will cause explosive growth into a new golden age of film. I talked about in the last week's episode where films are too big. These $100 million projects are pricing out new filmmakers. And if we keep pricing out new filmmakers, there are Scorsese's and Spielberg's and J.J. Abrams of the world who are trying to get in, who are trying to break into this industry. And not everybody can get into UC USC or UCLA or Carnegie Mellon. Like they can't get into these film schools. Not everybody can go to these film schools that are their stepping stone to these $100 million movies. We want to encourage filmmakers to shoot films in the backyards uh, all around the country. So this is a step in that direction is if we can purchase an NFT that will encourage a young filmmaker to make their movie, to get, get to have the funding, to do it right, to get it into a theater. That is a beautiful step forward for the space. And I'm truly stoked to see what other innovations come next in the NFT space. And now it's time for my favorite part of the show, which is the Lad City Lounge, where you get to kick it with me, your fun uncle, deep in the heart of Lad City, where we are building castles in the sky. That's right, Lad City is a metaverse web three space where we are building the blockchain future we all wanna be a part of. It is a news hub for all things crypto, NFT, and blockchain related news. If you're watching this, you of course know about the YouTube page. Well, we are dropping alpha almost every single day in the space. If you're not already subscribed, please click it, hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on any of this content. And of course, give me a like down below, maybe leave a comment, tell me what you like, what you dislike. I'm okay with constructive criticism. I mean, look at this shirt. You think I get my feelings hurt? Nay, I'm fun uncle. Hit me with it. I want to build a better mousetrap, which starts by you telling me what you liked and what you disliked. Hit me with the comments down below. But if you really want to communicate with me, the best way to do so is in the Discord. If you're not already a part of this Discord, the links are in the description down below. This is where you want to be. Honestly, we are talking by the minute every single day. We have thousands of users contributing to this Discord regularly. We're dropping alpha, telling you where the rug pulls are, what's a scam, what's not, not a scam. We're answering questions. We have so many mods contributing and helping you uh, figure out the space. It's good to have a community, especially when the markets are red, and this is the best place to be. So, Click the link down below, join the Discord. You really don't want to miss out on this. And, and I'm just I'm just scratching the surface here. This is just the main chat. We have an NFT chat. 
We got a gaming chat. There's a DeFi chat. We got a shill zone. Just there's one one page just dedicated to memes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And and also, if I haven't sold you yet on it, we have the Lads Insider tab, where our mod, the best mod in the biz, hash rhymes, curates news articles daily. Look at this. This isn't just one or two. These are dozens of news articles on the reg. Hash has segmented them into uh, different themes here, which is just incredible. I mean, it, just just the lads, lads Insider tab alone should be a selling point for you, but there's more, you know? So get in the main chat today. Hit me up with a DM. I would love to talk to you uh, about anything about about it doesn't have to be just blockchain stuff about your feelings uh, are you working on a car do you play video games uncle will love to talk to you about it but mostly for cryptocurrency nfts blockchain and web3 news is all taking place here in the discord we're encouraging people we're <laughs> we're dropping emojis we're hyping people up and speaking of hyping people up i have an award that i give out every single week to the most contributing member of the Discord. I am combing through the space and I'm picking one user who is the most lad city lad a lad can be. Someone who is dropping alpha, who is contributing, who is helping us move the ball forward, who is helping us build a better Discord. And this week's winner is none other than Louis C. Rhymes is our lad of the week. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Louis C. Rhymes, for being such a contributing member of the Lad City space. Seriously, Louis C. Rhymes is now hosting a new show you can only see on the Discord. He is doing video and audio, whereas he is talking about music and NFTs. He is a music producer, music creator himself, and he is deep into the music NFT space. And you get to watch him discuss uh, in, in detail how, how it's going, you know, how, how his struggles are in making music NFTs, how he has moved away from Spotify and is now interacting purely in the NFT space because it's more advantageous for him as a music producer. He's bringing on guests and talking to them about their interactions in the space, their likes, their dislikes, what to avoid if you are a music producer who wants to get into the NFT space. So this is another massive selling point for the Discord. And I got to thank you, Louis C. Rhymes, for moving that ball forward. Thank you. 10,000 times over for being you. I am going to give you some tokens in the Discord. And uh, for those of you who want to be the last City Lad of the Week, all you got to do is just join the Discord and contribute. Help us build a better Discord, honestly. If you are moving the ball forward, dropping alpha on a regular basis, um, then I will take notice. You know, I will, I'm combing through and I'm hand selecting people who I think deserve this award and I'll give you a shout out on my show. I'll airdrop you some tokens and I will encourage everybody to keep doing the same. I will keep giving out this award as long as people are doing the kind of things that Louis C. Rhymes is doing. So if you want to know how to do it, just follow uh, Louis C. Rhymes in his template and, and, and what he's doing and you might also win this award moving forward. So I'm excited to do it. Um, I'm going to airdrop you some tokens here after the show goes live. And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Louis C. Rhymes. I love the show. And what's more, uh, let me know how I can help you out with the show, Louis. If you want me to come on to be a guest, if you have any technical issues or anything like that, if you want me to do some segments for you, I love what you're doing. I think you're freaking hilarious. It's awesome how you incorporate rhymes into your casual conversation. It's really cracking me up. And you're super entertaining, too. I've been watching the show just like audibly laughing, watching, uh, listening to what, what you have to say. You're, you're a very entertaining person who doesn't get enough credit for what you're doing. And um, you're great. Thanks for joining the Lad City community. Thanks for doing what you're doing. I want to help you move the ball forward uh, because you've already done so much for us. Let us do some for you. And finally, I got to talk about the Fun Uncle NFTs. That's right. I got a whole batch of NFTs available on the OpenSea Marketplace, and they're on sale. Markets are down, so these NFTs are cheap. So you can scoop up some of these cheap NFTs today. The real selling point of these NFTs are the unlockable content. Most importantly, 
are the $500 in Ethereum prizes I'm making available for my NFT holders. All you gotta do is buy an NFT, follow the links within the unlockable content, and I have a series of riddles for you to solve. The first riddle has already been solved by our user Llama. If you're part of the Discord, you know who I'm talking about. But Llama, you have solved the first riddle. I've already dropped some uh, Ethereum to your wallet, $100 in Ethereum to your wallet. And uh, that's a real selling feature of these NFTs is the NFTs are cheap, but I'm keeping the prizes the same amount. So you want to get in on this, guys. Seriously, you can get a cheap NFT and you have a potential of winning $100 in Ethereum per riddle you solve. So the first riddle has already been solved. And for my holders, the second riddle is now live. So click into the unlockable content in your, in your NFT, follow the links to the second riddle, first one to solve that riddle and email me the answer, you are going to win $100 in Ethereum. I'm keeping the prizes the same. So this is this is a sale you do not want to miss out on. The NFTs are cheap and the prizes are staying the same amount. But the other thing I want to touch on is I was doing a giveaway on Twitter. That's right. All last week, I had a giveaway going on on my Twitter. If you followed these, liked, retweeted, and tagged three friends, I am going to pick a winner right now. We had 64 people who entered the contest, and all I got to do is go to my Twitter picker right here. This is great. There's a software already uh, for me to pick, which is great. If anyone who wants to do this themselves, just go to twitterpicker.com, and it does all the heavy lifting for you. So I've got uh, to click here. Entries loaded. Okay. And I need to pick a winner. So let's continue and let's begin the draw. I'm going to do this here live with you. So, you know, I'm not faking it. Okay. Maria Verde. Oh my gosh. Okay. Maria Verde, you are my winner. Just like that. Okay. Awesome. That, that was easy. <laughs> okay. Awesome. So Maria Verde, you are the winner. So hit me up. Email me, give me your ETH address, and I will give you a NFT that is valid for prizes. This is amazing. So uh, I, I love it. This is, this is easy. Uh, Maria Verde, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for liking, commenting, retweeting, tagging friends. I am rewarding you with an NFT that is available for prizes. And again, to all my NFT holders, the second riddle is now live. Again, there's all kinds of unlockable content here. I'm giving you a digital download of my first book. And uh, there is more to come. My NFT holders will also get an airdrop of my second batch of NFTs following NFT land in Las Vegas, March 22nd through the 25th. I would also love to meet up with all my NFT holders down in Las Vegas. I'm hosting several events throughout the year that are only available to my NFT holders. So I'm excited to see you all there. Maria Verde, you are now in the club. You're one of you're my fun aunt, Maria Verde. Uh, you can be a fun uncle if you want. I, I don't care. But you are in the club with me. Thank you so much for now being an NFT holder. Email me uh, and I will send you this. You can also hit me up in the Discord too. If you have trouble finding my email, I'm not just willy nilly giving it out. The, uh, <laughs> so hit me up in the Discord too. Um, and thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you 10,000 times over everyone who are my NFT holders. Check out the unlockable content for the second riddle. And uh, that's all I got for this episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This is Fun Uncle. I'm doing this every Sunday here on the Lad City Network at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. In closing, I hope everyone uh, goes out there is being the best version of themselves do not let the red days in the crypto markets keep you down. This is only the beginning, okay? We have so much more room to grow, and I'm excited. I'm ecstatic on what is coming next. It's things we can't even imagine. There are Gen Zs in their parents' garage building Web3, and all of this is just a stepping stone to this technological shift that is ahead of us. So I hope everyone has a great Sunday, and uh, stay uncle. <laughs>